Hello students. So today we will be talking about vernacular architecture. This is a first lecture in the introduction to vernacular architecture. So precisely the term vernacular needs to be understood as uh, it's a language of a people or national language. It's everyday speech or dialect including colloquialism as opposed to standard literary, lingual and scientific forms or scientific idioms. So here it also needs to be understood that language unique to particular group of people and it's um, kind of a jargon or argot, uh, a language lacking standardization or in a written form. It's also the uh, indigenous language of the people into which the words of the mass are translated. So vernacular counts as a noun in a very different forms. It, uh, it actually exists in the world. Also, in other words, the vernacular needs to be understood as an adjective, wherein vernacular is more compared to the uh, it's a comparative in nature or it's a superlative in nature uh, can be understood as uh, of or pertaining to everyday language as opposed to standard literary, lingual or scientific idiom belonging to the countries of one's birth, one's own by birth or nature, it's native or maybe indigenous. In the field of architecture, of or related to the Mughal building materials and styles. So this is very important to know, understand. It's as a two important ingredients of vernacular architecture. Also as an art, it is, uh, it can be sensed as it is connected to a collective memory and not imported. So uh, this is understood as a vernacular architecture. So, in the domestic architecture in modern Africa, the vernacular architecture uses quite a wide range of materials such as thatch that you can see in a, uh, in a picture uh, where it has been used as a roof form. So, it is actually used with the stick and the wood, mud, mud bricks, rammed earth and stone with the preference of materials varying by the region. It can also be understood as a new vernacular architecture or new forms of vernacular architecture that continues for instance with the great mosques of Nayoro or New Gorana. So these can also be understood in terms of Lunda dwellings that came from the Kingdom of Lunda in a pre-colonial uh, uh, African confederation of states it, where it displays the square and the cone on the ground types of African vernacular architecture.
Here in this picture, you can see the sun-dried bricks, out of which a huge worm or rampart has been made for the structure. It clearly defines that this was actually used for making of the huge constructions in the ancient and the medieval period. These are actually very uh, vernacular in consideration wherein you tend to transfer the knowledge from one generation to the another generation. Another good example of vernacular materials are the baked tiles those are used for the roofings in the various parts of the world, especially in the South India and along the coastal belts, we we'll find these details in a very uh, usual manner. So we, we try to put it in a very um, intelligent building material that is cast by the people themselves on site. In this picture, you actually can see the various materials which are used for making of a traditional housing in a, one of the areas in the world. Um, primarily, this is not just the, uh, the construction system. This is actually the, uh, you may say, it's a, a, a unification or the collaboration of various materials wherein the, the bottommost material being a very, very high in strength is used as a sun-dried bricks. Above it, there is a thatch uh, mixed with the mud used as a building material for making of the walls. Similarly, the walls and the partitions, they are also created with the bamboo or the straws put together. So these are quite well knitted uh, and put it in a very, very uh, subtle way, uh, quite easy way uh, to make the various uh, proportions to make the various portions of the uh, of the structure. So you can see that the new materials actually which are known as the GI sheets, they, are, they took over the traditional thatched roof. So uh, this may also be regarded as one of the key ingredients of uh, vernacular architecture where uh, uh, all the materials they come into um, come together to make the complete composition and devise a composition in a very good and better manner. In the traditional vocabulary of one of the very uh, good fine states uh, of India, that's Gujarat, we find some uh, similar structures which are known as bhungas. So these structures are primarily made out of the various uh, materials, the local materials, that's uh, the mud and the wood and the above it supporting the roof as a thatched roof supported by the the bamboo uh, skeleton underneath so uh, or the wooden skeleton underneath so uh, you can find the traditional artwork therein which are one of the most important ingredients of any society to actually move on for uh, making their own uh, your uh, the making their own uh, identity so uh, it's uh, quite a well, uh, landscape. Uh, it's uh, intrude with the landscape uh, um, from the all the sides. Uh, students, uh, so in this structure, uh, you can see that you know, quite a many good craftsmen they are working on a very old or a primitive uh, building. So this is one of the great mosques in the Jain, uh in Mali. So uh, this is one of the heritage structures uh, and. Uh, very good and uh, very kind of brilliant in uh, techniques of construction. So what they actually did that at the various levels or the various courses, they introduced the wooden battens uh, across the mud wall in order to support it as a, uh, as a structural material. So uh, it is very, very important uh, for any of the constructions to be used uh, for making of the walls. Uh, in, this, in this case, it is quite uh, interesting to notice that 
around the height of uh, five feet the intersection of the wooden logs they actually uh, take the whole load down the uh, down to the ground and uh, they transfer the load equally because you can see the the patterns they are in a one upright line and uh, a one up uh, linear line that's a transverse in the horizontal lines which you can see in the video uh, so here you are supposed to understand that how the various materials and the construction techniques they combine together to complete uh, one very uh, nice structural systems uh, and uh, this uh, picture states the uh, the conservation part that has been done uh, for this world heritage site so the mud and the wood they are used best uh, as a example to uh, to be understood here one of the very untouched areas in the mud houses in kabul uh, in afghanistan so there we find that the still now in nowadays also the the people are living in those good condition and uh, uh, where they are very much near to their heritage uh, but of course we can also see that there are a few um, interesting uh, uh, policies of uh, infrastructure so here I, I wish to mention that uh, you can see the actually the transition how the the modernism uh, is taking over the vernacular uh, architectural vocabulary and that is our own and that is quite near to the user how the uh, different materials and the different uh, elements of the construction system they are being used to uh, to sit into the environs for the very nice uh, ecological uh, relationship between the, between the man and the environment so uh, you can see the 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 jollies or the lattice uh, structure that is being uh, created through the walls uh, with the bamboos and also the the thatched roof on the top which actually uh, which actually take care of the heat gain vis a vis you can see the the glass windows on the back side where the total heat is actually transmitted inside of the structure and has got no relationship to to the uh, environment systems uh, so uh, the picture quite uh, quite interestingly it, it tells the uh, the how the the break even is there with the new materials and the old construction uh, old materials and the construction techniques applied where uh, there is a difference of the uh, two forms and uh, functions there are many good construction systems around the world out of which uh, the the wood uh, and the mud actually uh, came out as a very uh, noble and uh, you you may say that a very uh, kind of um, you know uh, not the not the um, uh, innovative material but uh, use the material as a local available material uh, those are used for construction system. We have a lot much examples around the world uh, that explains how the wood and the mud they have been intruded in the uh, in the construction system and how the various uh, elements of uh, construction system they are they happen to interact with each other uh, to make uh, the complete uh, uh, composition of the structure. Here in this picture, you can see that the lumbers which are diagonally uh, which are diagonal in a you know uh, in a um, in a uh, in 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 um, a shape. So uh, they are they are they are provided uh, on the, on the top of the roof and uh, which is which actually uh, is supported by the cross section of uh, the lumbers or the wood, uh, making the uh, the complete edge of the structure so this is very interesting where how the loadings and how the uh, joints are being made uh, uh, actually when you join your hands and you cross your fingers uh, so you put it very tight and uh, don't let it go so uh, it is one of the 
uh, very uh, good joints uh, made for the earthquake resistant structures and so these houses can dwell for more than 2000 years of the uh, historical timelines so uh, in a vernacular architecture uh, we can we can actually mark it as a uh, it is characterized by the use of local materials and knowledge usually without a supervision of professional architects uh, vernacular architecture represents the majority of buildings and settlements created in the pre-industrial societies and includes a wide range of buildings, building traditions and methods of construction. Vernacular buildings are typically simple and practical, whether residential houses or built for other purposes. Vernacular architecture can be contrasted against elite and polite architecture, which is characterized by stylistic elements of design, intentionally incorporated for aesthetic purposes, which go beyond a building's functional requirements. In turn, traditional architecture, which exists somewhere between the two extremes, yet still is based on the authentic themes. So the vernacular architecture broadly can cover the, the major building materials and the, the knowledge base, the, uh, the techniques, the, uh, the traditions and the uh, methods of construction are uh, all put together to understand the building in a more appropriate manner in terms of the, uh, the function of the buildings, the form of the buildings and the structure of the buildings. So all three uh, parameters, they are quite important to understand, to be understood in terms of uh, vernacular uh, meanings and the traditions. So uh, it can be described as a built environment that is based on the local needs, defined by the availability of particular material indigenous to its particular region and reflects local tradition and cultural practices. Traditionally, the study of the vernacular architecture did not examine formerly schooled architects, but instead that of the skill design skills and tradition of local builders who were rarely given an, any attribution for the work. More recently, vernacular architecture has been examined by designers and the building industry in an effort to be more energy conscious with contemporary design and construction, part of the broader interest in sustainable design. It is quite interesting to know that vernacular folk, traditional, common, ordinary and popular architecture are sometimes used interchangeably. However, Eleanor Bloom wrote an lengthy discussion of these domes in traditional buildings, a global survey of structural forms and cultural functions book. In his book, he represents scholarly opinion that folk building or folk architecture is built by persons not professionally trained in building arts. Where vernacular architecture is still of the common people, but they may be built by trained professionals, such as through apprenticeship, but still they are using the local traditional designs and materials. On the other hand, traditional architecture is passed down from the person to person, generation to generation, practically, orally, but at any level of society, not just by the common people. Noble discourages use of term primitive architecture as having a negative connotation. The term popular architecture is used more in the Eastern Europe and is synonymous with the folk or the vernacular architecture. So in vernacular architecture, uh, it might be designed by the people who do have some training in design. Ronald Bullskill has nonetheless defined vernacular architecture as a building designed by an amateur without any training in design. The individual will have been guided by a series of conventions built up in the locality paying little attention to what may be fashionable. The function of the building would be the dominant factor, aesthetic considerations through present time to some small degree. 
being quite minimal. Local materials would be used as a matter of course, other materials being chosen as imported quite exceptionally. So it is quite a uh, quite related to the traditional architecture but, but, not, but must not be confused with that. Although there are quite uh, interesting links between the two typologies. Traditional architecture also includes a building which bear elements of polite design, temples and places for example which normally would not be including under the rubric of vernacular. In architectural terms the vernacular can be contrasted with the polite which is characterized by the stylistic elements of design intention, intentionally incorporated by the professional architect for aesthetic purposes, which go beyond a building's functional requirement. Between the extremes of the holy vernacular and the completely polite, examples occur which have some vernacular and some polite content, often making the differences between the vernacular and the polite a uh, matter of degree. So, it must not be confused with, but it must it must be understood in a very, very depth that what are the various links between the two typologies of uh, architectural vocabulary. The Encyclopedia of Vernacular Architecture of the World defines vernacular architecture as comprising the dwellings and the other buildings of the people. It is related to the environmental contexts and available resources that are customarily owner and the community built utilizing traditional technologies. All the forms of vernacular architecture are built to meet the specific needs, accommodating the values, economies and the ways of life of the culture that produce them. Broadly, it's a broad grassroots concepts and uh, that includes uh, the Aboriginal, Indigenous, Ancestral, Rural and the Ethnic architecture and is contrasted with the more intellectual architecture called polite, formal and academic architecture. It's primarily to, range, uh, to read between the two wide range of the thresholds that's a vernacular and the polite architectural vocabularies. So in a nutshell, there are the major parameters to understand the word vernacular can be put as the culture that takes care of the, uh, the complete uh, societal uh, order, uh, the region that cares care of light and ventilation that is very important for any of the dwellings, the climate that is responsible for making the complete, uh, complete whole, locally available materials they are put together to make the, to make the forms of the uh, various uh, uh, structures, the traditional knowledge which actually transcends itself and its uh, experiences to the uh, generations uh, to make, uh, to use, to uh, build uh, one typical typology of uh, structures and uh, its, uh, um, its know-how of how they, it should be done. Uh, it's the construction system it's quite important because uh, the one of the key ingredients of the structural system that's required for the any of the dwellings to be made is other construction system that is um, that should be known and the last but not the least uh, the artwork which uh, uh, which actually gave the aesthetic value to the complete um, uh, to the complete um, you know uh, the whole of the uh, the structures and their use and uh, help the society to uh, to be uh, with with the with the with the space with the ecosystem and uh, the vernacular architecture uh, primarily is quite near to the uh, environmental uh, uh, sustain, sustainability and uh, should be upgraded in uh, various terminologies so at the last, uh, I think this whole video would have been very useful for you to understand the various uh, parameters and the uh, various important uh, aspects of vernacular architecture. So this was only an introduction. So see you there um, for the, with, the, with the next video, uh, which will tell you the vernacular architecture vis-a-vis uh, it's sustainable 
uh, development, how the sustainable development it is linked with the uh, vernacular construction techniques. So, see you there. Bye-bye.